we're gatekeepers of the home and the nation. Relentless in prayer and intercession. Today I am living as a servant of the Lord. Every dust on your marital life, every dust on your marital destiny must not leave this place with you. Enterprising and creative, we are bold, daring, and full of faith. We are Daughters of Destiny. Today our topic is I come with boldness. I come with boldness. Hebrews 4.16 Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy that we may find grace to help in time of need father lord reveal the deep things in your word in the name of jesus cause us to be richer than we came Lord, expand our horizon by this singular scripture. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want to talk about by the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning is on the last word in this scripture. What is the last word? In the scripture need amen what is a need what is a need a need is a requirement a need is a necessary duty or obligation a need is a necessity is an urgent requirement when you say you need something that that means you can't do without that thing so quickly i'm going to draw an analogy a need is different from a want. A need is different from a desire. I may want a Samsung phone. Or I may desire to buy Galaxy Note 5. <laughs> Amen. And when I got there, I was shocked. <laughs> I turned back quickly <laughs> to review my needs. But what I really need is to communicate. Okay? I need to communicate, but I'm a I, I'm, I'm a desire to communicate via a means. Can you see? So the basic thing that we're talking, the profound thing is the need. But the way you want to express or satisfy that need may be through a desire. Are we getting it? Or you may just desire something you do not need. So, we need air. We need water to survive. We need shelter. But you may say you want, because you need shelter, you may desire to build a house in Banana Island. Yeah. Amen. 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 But you don't necessarily need to be in Banana Island to have shelter. Are we, are we getting something here? So let's begin to look at our spiritual needs first. And then we come to the physical one. Salvation is a need. For us to have eternal life, John 3.16, we'll need a Bible reader quickly so that it can be fast. Salvation is a need. Nobody can make it to heaven without Jesus. It is not a suggestion. It is a need. Let's read John 3.16. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That he gave his only begotten that son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, he has given his only begotten son. But he has still given us the option. But we need Jesus. Even as we have the initial need satisfied, having Jesus in our lives, we still need him on the journey. On the journey of life, we need Jesus. Philippians 4.19, we're looking at spiritual needs that we have. And we said the first one is the need for salvation. 
But my God shall supply all your need. But my God shall supply all your need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Can somebody say an amen to that? Amen. So we have a sure word from God that no matter what is our need, God will supply it. Amen. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 21. 1 Corinthians 12. And the eye cannot say unto the hand. The eye cannot say unto the hand. I have no need of thee. Uh -huh. Nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble and necessary. And those members of the body which think to be less honorable. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Amen. And our uncomely parts. It says the eye cannot say to the hand. Now look at your body now. Can the hand say I don't need the leg? That's how we need each other in the body of Christ. The pastor needs the congregation. The congregation needs the pastor. You need your sister. You need somebody to advise you. When you get to the crossroad in life, sometimes it is not money that will save you, but a word. In fact, it may be money that brought the problem. <laughs> When you got the money and you are, you are not submitting to your husband and there's problem in the marriage and things are going haywire. So you need somebody to speak the word, somebody in spiritual authority. And so no man is an island. Sometimes I see some people, they say there's nobody that can talk to them. Ah, those kind of people are dangerous. He says, the eye cannot say, I don't need the hand. So in the body of Christ, we need each other. The men need the women. The women need the men. We need the children. The children need the adults. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 36, 36, 36. For you have need of patience. You have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. We all need to develop patience. After you have done the will of God, you are standing, you are praying, you are doing everything, you still need patience before you get that thing. The book of Hebrews says that they threw faith and patience obtain the will of God. You need patience. It's a necessary requirement. If you're not a patient person, you will lose out. I see some people, they are not patient. Anywhere they get to on the queue, they are the first to complain. You see some people lining up. They've seen the way the person is walking. Maybe she has challenge, but immediately they get there. Why is this queue not moving? You know those kind of... The Bible says we need patience. That after we have done the will of God, so, we all have different needs in our lives. How do we receive these needs? That's what the scripture is saying. Hebrews 4.16. Let's go to our scripture for today. We have established that we all have a need. We all have different needs. There are spiritual needs. There are physical needs. A need is a necessary requirement. A need is something you must have. How do we get this need? According to the scripture. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. There is a location where your needs will be met. Okay? There is a location. And this morning you have come to the right place. And the Lord will meet you at your point of need. The location is not physical, but it's spiritual. It is the place of prayer. It can be in your bedroom when you approach the throne of grace. And we know how we approach the throne. We enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. So when you approach God in prayer, that is the right location for you to get your need. He says when you get to that location, two things are there, two divine provisions. One is grace. And the other is mercy. Meaning where we are wrong, the mercy of God will avail for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Meaning where we are not qualified, mercy will bring it to us. Amen. God will just have mercy on us this morning. Amen. And release a supernatural requirement Amen. in Jesus' name. God will have mercy on somebody's family this morning. Amen. God will have mercy on somebody's child this morning. Amen. God will have mercy on somebody's husband this morning. Amen. God will have mercy on somebody's life this morning. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So at the throne of grace, mercy is available. What you are not qualified for, what you don't deserve, what is bigger than you by the mercy, the sheer mercy of God. God can just have mercy on us as a ministry. 
and build that place for us. You don't believe it. By the mercy of God. Because he sits on the mercy seat. This morning we tap into divine mercy. Say in the name of Jesus this morning. I tap into divine mercy. Because I have come to the throne of God. And I know he's sitting on the seat of mercy. This morning father by your mercy. By your mercy. Lord. Meet every need in my life. In my family. In the ministry of daughters of destiny. In the name of Jesus. By your mercy. In Jesus mighty name. Another provision at the throne of at that throne is grace. Grace is unmerited favor. By the grace of God, you do so many things that by your own strength, you may not be able to achieve. This morning, abundant grace is available to us. I prophesy abundant grace. I prophesy abundant grace to our families, to our businesses, to our lives, to the ministry of Daughters of Destiny to Nigeria in the name of Jesus. No matter how difficult things are in Nigeria, no matter how much we don't understand how to fix it, I believe the grace of God can see us through in this nation. That's something we need to tap into. When you don't understand the equation again, call for the grace. When change has changed, and dollar has become 512, 516 in two years from about 200 to 516 many of us don't know the implication because you don't need to change an equipment you don't know the implication yet some people don't when you need to change an equipment because we don't produce anything in Nigeria we're always consuming that's when it will hit you what they are talking about but let the grace of God help us in this nation Let's begin to prophesy grace on the Nigerian economy. In the name of Jesus, we prophesy grace. We prophesy grace. We prophesy grace. It is important we pray for the nation. Because if we don't pray for the nation, it's going to affect our pocket. We prophesy grace. Lord, help our nation. Lord, help our leaders. Father, deliver us. Help us in this nation. We don't even know where we're going again. But you, God of all grace, look upon us in this nation. Help us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. So when we come to that throne, we get grace and mercy. Now, what should be our attitude? Go back to the scripture, Hebrews 4.16. Very loaded scripture. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne Let of grace. Let us come boldly. Number one, if you have a need in your life, you have a responsibility to come. To come is an action word. To come. So, when you have a need, there is a part you need to play. Though God is going to meet you at the point of your need, but you've got to come. You must arise. There is a doing on your part. You must come. You must get out of your lethargy. You must get out of your depression. You must get out of those things that are putting you down. And rise up and come. It says, let us therefore come to the throne of grace. If you and I sit down in pity party, nothing will get done. Well, maybe in some instances, when we cry to God, he hears us. But I've heard that tears don't move God, but the word moves God. The word of God will move God to act. So how are you coming? You must arise and begin to find out what the word of God says about you. You must arise and begin to step out towards the direction that the word of God has told you to go. Some of us may need to arise in repentance. Some of us may need to arise and begin to find out those things that will help us on our journey. Yes, there is a path that God is going to play, but there is a path that we have to play. If you're going somewhere, you must arise and start the journey one step at a time. It may even be from the place of prayer. The Spirit of God will direct you to do one thing or the other. It says, let us come boldly. The attitude now is extremely important when you're coming to God. You cannot be timid when you're coming to God. Some people believe they are slaves of God. We are not slaves of God. What are we? 
We are children of God. We are sons of God. Okay? So when you are coming to God, your attitude is important. Do not be timid. Do not be naive. Don't be unsure. But we must come with boldness. We must come with boldness. So what does it mean to be bold? To be bold means you do not hesitate. You are not fearful. <laughs> In the face of actual possible danger. To be bold means you are not fearful in the face of actual rebuff. It is possible to be rebuffed. I'm going to go anyway. To be bold means you are courageous and you are daring. So when you are going before God, your attitude matters. He says, bring to me your strong reasons. At Daughters of Destiny, we want every woman to know that help is always available. We are here to offer godly and practical counsel for various issues peculiar to you as a woman. Contact us today via our counseling hotline 0708-307-6210 and 0909-328-8336. You will overcome. You are a daughter of destiny. Daughters of Destiny